Welcome, welcome everyone to the next in my lineup of Elite Specialization presentation. Today, I want to talk to you all about the Scourge. So this is the new Necromancer spec. And it's uh, something that's been really interesting to me because it's very much centered on the new barrier mechanic. In fact, barrier as a, an element of the user interface, if you look at it closely, it's all very sandy looking, right? And it's all kind of white. And that really seems to come mostly from a, a top level, it seems, uh, the Scourge, which is a necromancer that very much enjoys playing in the sands and is an interesting mix, much like the Firebrand, of support and also condi damage. It seems that they're hitting for similar spaces. Whether barrier is actually worthwhile or not, I guess are discussions for a whole other time. But I want to show you at least how the Scourge works, what it is that Necromancers will be looking forward to doing, and that is tons of torment, that is tons of burning, condition damage, and some general offensive team support for people. So let's do it. The other thing that's really interesting about this for me is uh, how it combos with standard specialization stuff, and I want to show you guys some of the more interesting nuances there. Necromancers who embrace the power of the Scourge have learned to infuse the sands with their life force. Scourges raise sand shades, which shield their allies and torment their foes. Their punishment skills turn enemy strengths into weaknesses, granting boons and protective barriers to those fortunate enough to be on the Scourge's side. They wield torches to burn and corrupt the ground under their enemies' feet, lighting the way to their destruction. So let's start off, I guess, with the first new thing for this class. We're actually looking at a new weapon of an offhand. We uh, get for the first minor the ability to craft sand shadows and command them using life force, and we gain access to punishment and shade skills. So our weapon is torch. It's offhand this time, so this is the torch I've got equipped. A nice skull fitting uh, torch here. We get two cool abilities which we can check out on that one. Uh, and the most dramatic change is, yeah, our user interface looks very different to playing uh, kind of a regular necromancer. I will just show you that here. If we go to, say, Reaper, the original specialization, we get a shroud, which when we toggle into, gave us this huge scythe and all of these new abilities. Well, this guy doesn't really get this at all. It does get a shroud, but the shroud on the new Elite Specializations functions very differently. Instead, you give up this idea of having a second health bar, and instead, you uh, just get access to your skills at all times. So we don't have to dip into these anymore, they're always available, but the uh, counter to that is that we're a lot squishier. Now, becoming a lot squishier is potentially a very nice thing for necromancers, because it frees up a lot of, like, the, the power budget, if you will, that they can allocate onto this class, and now that that innate tankiness isn't necessarily there, the devs don't have to be so scared to go quite heavy on support or quite heavy on the kind of offense that we can throw out. So we'll look at all of these. Uh, generating life force. You see this bar here. This is our life force bar. It's no longer green. It's yellow and it's sandy. Uh, but it generally functions the same way. All the old stuff that generated life force will still generate life force. So if you're running dagger and doing lots of auto attacks or using your uh, feast of corruption on your scepter three, that's all generating the same place. We're going to basically be maxed out for the purposes of this presentation video because I'm stood quite deliberately near the AOE area, which everybody wants to be at right now to test out their various elite specs and every time these golems are dying we're getting a uh, shroud thrown in at us you see these little green orbs that keep coming towards us yeah that's us sapping from their deaths so um I guess let's just start off with the torch, uh, then I'll show you some of the uh, new abilities that we have on our F keys, and then we'll look at some of the trait stuff. So, uh, the torch. Torch has two skills, uh, so this is one of the most simple new weapons that we've got. First we have Harrowing Wave. Uh, sounds like an underwater skill really, doesn't it? So we unleash a wave of corrupted fire, burning and tormenting our enemies. Very simple stuff, 600 range, 5 targets, and it puts out 3 sacks of burn and 3 sacks of torment straight away. Now, a trait uh, will really make this a lot stronger later, so keep an eye out. But here, I'll show you guys what this looks like on the golems here. Voila. And so we hit five targets. Really, really nice stuff. Uh, and really, that's all we have to say. Next, we have Oppressive Collapse, where we corrupt the ground under our target. And if they remain in the area, then they get knocked down. It's also might generation, not just for us, but for our allies as well. And that's really one of the main things that top level the Scourge is doing. It gives out a lot of might. There's a ton of might, really, on the new Elite Specializations. I think this is to make us more comfortable moving away from purely double phalanx strength comps and things. Um, but yeah, so and especially when we think about well versus one PvP, 
key these th these uh, ideas of more might generation might be interesting. But what's cool about this is this oppressive collapse. It really it does only work on one target. One target. It's a two second knockdown, and a player who's been attached attacked by oppressive collapse can just move away. But if they don't, then they get this uh, fairly nasty knockdown. So I'll show it off on the indestructible golem here. So we're going to use the five. Look at that big ground there. And then they get knocked down a second later. Do you see that? So you can see it and dodge it. It's kind of like nice timing for the dodge. But you've got to be very cautious. Uh, what's interesting, though, is that the more conditions your foe has then it generates more might. So it's two might for every condi. And we can see from this golem what we've got. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So that's about 14 might. And this is sort of an average amount of condis you'd see. It's about 14 might very easily in any kind of scenario where lots of people are hitting one target, as you often find in PvE, which is where a lot of my commentary is sort of geared towards here, I think. Um, but uh, it can go much higher than that as well. So if you just watch this player here, this person's got six might. They're giving themselves some. But if I pop the five... You'll see we suddenly pushed them quite high, and I myself got some there too. Um, so this is an interesting skill, and there's a lot of different ways you're going to be able to push Might out onto your friends. Uh, so yeah, Torment, Knockdown, and Might. There you go. That's the uh, the Torch. Definitely, um, you're going to be looking at some of the core Necromancer offhands for most areas of the game, like PvP. You're still going to want stuff like Dagger offhand for the transfer, or you're going to want Warhorn to be moving around and to get the unblockable dazes for reses and stuff like that. But uh, these are still quite nice uh, in certain areas. So they you go that's the torch moving over let's look at our utility skills now the classification that these are is punishment now that might suggest to you that they've got some interesting um like uh they damage you in order to accomplish stuff which is my first impression of what they were but they're not that's just a tag for what they are i suppose runes and things might key into them uh, i do know that the scourge runes last i saw them were actually supporty runes that gave you barrier instead of dying when you would die you instead stay alive and you get barrier and really doesn't have anything to do with punishment it's not like punishments gain might or something. Uh, so I don't know what that is there. No other classes have punishments. It's new. It's a bit like the uh, Hollow Smith's excess abilities, and we can kind of ignore it. Um, but we do have a full selection of new punishments. Let's first look at the hill. And here we're going to see a lot of barrier immediately. First of all, it's a nice big meaty hill, but most of it is on the barrier itself. So when I pop this, if you watch my health, it's a lot of barrier. Now, that may not feel like too much barrier there on us with all of our crazy vitality, but that that barrier actually gets pumped out to our allies as well. That's a uh, So you can actually think of this as closer to something like wash away the pain than it might first appear. Now, obviously, that's barrier, and it's not raw health, and raw health is probably better, and the numbers are going to be way off and so forth. But yeah. Now, now, the other thing you'll notice, um, it says second, is something you'll find on a lot of punishments. And maybe this is why they're called punishments, but some, uh, I think at least one of them doesn't have this. So what this is, is this converts a boon. Why? How has this guy dragged Chieftain Utahine all the way up here? And why is he aggroed specifically on me? It was the friggin' dead eye that... No, what is this? I just got pulled by the axe. So annoying, all right? So here, look, if we watch these guys, we'll give them a ton of barrier. Boom, that's all barrier just from using our heal skill, and that's actually a good little uh, demonstration there of how it works for you all. So, uh, let's move on. I'll tell you what, Heart of the Mist is chaotic at the moment. It's absolutely, it's been crazy times for Guild Wars 2. It really has. Um, so, you'll notice, though, that the heal does something else. It converts a boon on nearby enemies into torment and cripple. Now, lots of punishments do that. Pretty much any time you pop a utility, you're going to do that. So nearby enemies, it will always be five targets around you within a 240 radius, which isn't too bad. They're all going to lose a boon every time you do this. But that's, and it uses the word convert there in the tooltip text. It's not really conversion that we're looking at. It's not really a convert. It's just they're going to lose that boon and instead they will gain torment and cripple. Two torment. One cripple every time. I love that combo of torment and cripple because torment you take more damage while moving, but then you're crippled, so you're moving for longer periods of time to go the same distance and so forth. I like that little combo, and you're going to see that continuously. So that's why there's like condi damage on this heal skill before we even look at any traits and things like that, right? So there you go, that's sand flare. I really like it. I like barrier. Maybe I'll end up hating barrier, but these days, right now, I, I think it's an interesting idea. Moving on, um, I'm going to disappoint you all straight away uh, by showing you a skill that's actually disabled right now, but it's really fun. Um, and hopefully I'll show it in some future videos for you guys. Sand swell. Again, another punishment. Again, when we pop it, we rip a boon and we put Torment and Cripple out. But listen to this. Plunge into the ground, creating a portal through Tyria for allied use. We grant allies who use that passage barrier. 
basically Scourge does get a mini version of the Necromant, uh, of the Mesmer, sorry, of the Mesmer's Portal. Um, and it's really fun. So it's 900 range. You can combo this with stuff like um, Spirit Walk as well, Spectral Walk, uh, to do it across really huge distances. And it is a very fun idea. It doesn't last as long as the Mesmer. It's not got quite the same quality of life, but it's very, very fun. Now, unfortunately, I guess some people found a way to really break the game with it as the content has temporarily been disabled, unfortunately. And I can't show it to you, but yeah, this is one of the most interesting new utilities of the entire Generation 2 set. We have another version of Portal, and Necromancers get uh, that available to them. It has a beautiful like, little animation on it as well. So okay, that's the next punishment. Moving over to ones I actually can talk about. Let's equip these now here. So, first of all, we've got Trail of Anguish. This has got a beautiful uh, visual effect on it. So, we leave a trail of sand as we travel. We get Swiftness for doing it, and any allies that walk in it get Swiftness as well. And then, uh, we also inflict burning on enemies. And uh, we also corrupt boons if they walk into the, the shroud, I think it is. So uh, we can test it out on this mesmer here. So as we walk Trail of Anguish, you'll see we drop all this beautiful sand behind us. We paint the ground. And as I walk over the mesmer there, hopefully I can lure him into it. Look at how good the sand looks. As we lure him into it, you see it applies burning to him. So enemies that walk in your sand get burnt. Allies get swiftness. And anyone in the area when you initially pop it will get that uh, lovely regular punishment thing where they lose a boon and gain some torment and cripple. Uh, I'll show it off to you guys again here. Really, really beautiful looking effect. I love the sound on this. So we can just sort of layer it around, run circles around our ally enemies. It's so good, isn't it? And as our allies walk through it, they will be uh, sped up by the sand. Uh, kind of a cool little version of maybe that Jarless Road thing we saw uh, two years ago with Half Thorns. Really, really like this. That's the Trail of Anguish. You see more of the sandiness that comes into this elite spe uh, specialization. Uh, pretty brilliant. Moving on, we have Desiccate. So we draw in vital enemy from our foes to get lots of life force. And also we grant boons to our nearby allies. And guess what? That's might again. So we could pop this every 20 seconds, less with alacrity. And uh, we give people even more might. So that's five might, just more generation, supplementary might. And you see that a lot on the Scourge. The idea is it's sort of a supporter that's also uh, sort of not going the full way of a phalanx strength warrior, but helping to buff might up maybe so that you can have a couple of people a bit like this and then get your 20 25 might anyway. Um, so yeah, this is just lots of uh, lots of generation for you. This is not a stun break. I'd almost expect this to be a stun break, but it's not. Uh, it's just that, and then we get the boon and torment uh, conversion there. But uh, about 10% life force, so that's nice per target, right? So let me just uh, demonstrate this to you for a second here, guys. I'm going to spend a ton of life force on skills we haven't talked about yet. Okay, so we're at half life force. If I walk into these golems and I just pop desiccate. You should see we get about 10% life force without any deaths or anything. And so there you go. We see a nice big chunk comes up there. So, uh, so yeah. And then last of all, we have Serpent Siphon. Again, uh, Boon Rip. But we unleash ghostly serpents towards foes in the target area. Actually, I haven't seen any snakes in the expansion yet. And I really want snakes when we go back to Eluna and we go to desert areas and rattles and things. That could be really cool. But uh, at least we get a little bit of that here. So um, we unleash these ghostly serpents towards the foes. And serpents that strike their targets become magical sand that grants allies barrier. And then we also have the conversion thing. So uh, this is actually a bit of flat damage on there and poison. So let's have a look. This is something more that's interesting with the animation. And it's unblockable, okay? So we'll just send the snakes off into this area. And there they go, out they go, and any allies that were near there would actually be gain gaining barrier from that. And a reasonable amount as well, 1,479 on whatever amulet it is we have right now. What do they actually start us out on? Which doesn't even have any healing power in it. We're on a Demolisher amulet right now. So here, uh, here's a Magi amulet, for example. And now you'll see we actually we get about 3,000 barrier we push out onto our allies just for being near these snakes. But I do love the look of those snakes, okay? So uh, there we go. Um, that's all of these utilities. Uh, last of all, we have the Elite Punishment. Uh, and this skill I'm not too sure about, honestly. I'm really not. It's kind of like another version of Plague Lands. So Plague Lands is just crazy massive Condi Bomb in an area. Um, this one is Ghastly Breach. Now, it's got some cool lore on it, but whether that means it's going to be a great skill, I don't know. So Breach into the Realm of Torment for a very brief time. Granting might to our allies and slowing down our enemies. All right, now you also do the convert thing. So this is might. This is about 15 might. It's a big area that you're going to lay on the ground, and people in it will pulse up three, six, nine. It will go all the way up to 15, okay? And you also put slow on people, and you also do a bit of damage with it, obviously. But aside from that, 
I don't know, man. On a 75 second cooldown, uh, we'll have to see how that goes. There might be other things that I'm missing and other synergies and interesting uh, use scenarios for it. But so here, I'll show you guys what this looks like. There you go. And it's like a, basically another big well for us and we got all this kind of like sandy look around in the areas we do it and we go all the way up to 15 might so if we have a lot of concentration on there um that could be cool i really want to see a, a stat set that gives us some concentration healing power and uh condition damage and that would be kind of really quite nice for the scourge i think so there you go those are our punishment utilities that's generally what they've uh, given us for that that's the torch now let's have a little bit of a look at what's going on with our shroud and this is really the main function now i've said this before i really don't believe this is a minion spec some people have suggested that it can be kind of minion-y i'm not quite sure uh, what it exactly is they're looking at there but the fundamental point of a scourge okay is you get to summon sand shades remember let's go look at that original miner again and see what it says. Uh, build. Gain the power to craft sand shadows. And command them using your life force. So that's what our F1 has become. It's using the ammunition mechanic. So we can cast three. These three little diamonds here represent how many we have out. And there's some really interesting traits that will change that in a second. But here, so the ground target within 900 range. So I'll pop one down there. And we get this very cool ground target tail. Look at that face, right, on the green tail. Uh, we'll put another one here. And so we'll put another one here. Bye, now these are like Ventari tablets. They affect enemies that are near them. They affect allies that are near them. But they're not actually, you know, entities that you can target or kill or whatever. They're just sort of floating here. So they're not really like standard minions. Uh, neither will they move around with you. If I walk all the way over here, they will stay there and eventually despawn. The chief is actually chasing me now, which is really scary. What caused him to aggro onto me as I moved away? It's like he was looking for a fight, and then I decided not to give it to him, so now he's, uh, now he's mad. Alright, and so they will slowly despawn, okay? So, um, they last for 25 seconds, and you get a new one to place down every 15. So you can pulse three out and basically constantly have three out. The other skills you use, and the traits you use, and so forth, all of that stuff is, uh, going to affect the kind of things that they can do in the area. So, um... Let me just place three down directly on top of one of myself. So we've got this nice little nest here. Uh, and let's mouse over a skill. So we get Nefarious Favor. And it says that you and your shades convert conditions from nearby allies into boons. And that's great. We don't have any conditions. We can't really demo that very well. Um, but uh, that's obviously some nice cleanse for your allies that you can pop every four seconds. Check that out. Nefarious Favor every four seconds. Now, one thing that might have struck you right now is that this could be crazy OP. And you're thinking, wow, that's insane WP. Because you can place three down and then every four seconds. So three, each one cleanses is two so then you're looking at six you six conditions converted to boons every four seconds that's not just a cleanse that's a conversion that's so strong right but you need to pay attention and this is very true for all of these skills targets affected by this ability can only be affected once per cast okay so what that means is you got you don't actually get six you only get two when i make a little nest like this if I stand in the middle of the range of all of these, and now I pop this ability, Nefarious Favor, that won't cleanse six for me. I can only be affected by one of these shades at once, all right? And so that kind of neuters a lot of what may originally look very strong. So what's useful as a Scourge is not placing them all in nests like this, but actually to spread them out a bit. Because these skills, you'll only be... People... Targets, whether that's offensive stuff or defensive stuff, will only be affected once anyway. So you may as well try and cover more ground, right? By having them spread out a little bit more like this. So that when I pop the two, if someone stood over here, they get the cleanse. Or if they're over here, they get the cleanse. You can cover more territory. And it's, that might seem kind of lame, but I actually think that's necessary for this mechanic of being able to place them where we like to even be worth it because otherwise all you're ever going to see people do is just make these nests and everything has to be balanced around a nest where they're all stacked on top of one another and that's not necessarily too fun uh, and if you're thinking yeah but I do want to stack them all together don't worry they have a grandmaster trait covered specifically for that play style if you watch my presentation on the hollow smith and you saw what they did uh, with the photon forge you'll see that they do something similar through the traits on the scourge and it's a lot of fun all right so um so yeah let's uh Let's place another one down. Again, because one or three all on this one spot, it doesn't matter. And let's look at the next skill. So Nefarious Favor is some um, conversion, very strong. Uh, next, Sand Cascade. So sand will rise up near me and my shades, and it will shield nearby allies. And again, you can only be affected once. So there's no point dropping three on and thinking you're going to get triple barrier. You will only get it once. But when we pop the three, what you're going to see is we're going to get barrier from that. So lots of supporty stuff on the two and the three. 
Then we have Garish Pillar, um, which is uh, our skill four. And this induces fear in enemies around us and our shades. Target's going to be affected once. So if I set up three shades, okay, all the way along here, I can create like a line in this choke. And what I can do is, on demand, if anyone ever walks into this choke like the chief there, boom, I can fear him with my F4 there. Which also put out some flat damage, it looked like, there as well. Uh, and you get this big fear. Um, spending life force as we use all of these abilities, by the way, guys. You're not seeing the life force mechanic because I'm constantly draining it from all this stuff dying. But yeah, this does all cost life force to use. So uh, we get that big fear there, and that's quite nice. Remember, we're a necromancer, and we can buff fear to start doing damage and stuff. We'll talk about that soon. Now, as a slight aside, by the way, as we mouse over these skills, one thing you guys should be thinking about is don't forget this is replacing our regular shroud and our potentially reaper shroud so you might be wondering why does this skill here have fear um, and it's a pretty powerful fear actually if you had five targets next to one of your shades and then five targets next to another one and then five targets next to another one and five targets next to you and they're all in separate places and you press that button you're gonna fear 20 people at once which can be very strong or you could do as little as fearing just one person at once and in a more clunky difficult to uh, execute way. Why is there fear here? Well, remember that when you're a core necromancer, what happens when you get your shroud skills? You get fear. And when you're in a, when you're a reaper, what happens when you're going to shroud? You also get fear. And so this is kind of a replacement. So with that skill four uh, out of the way, we now move on to the F5. Uh, the F5 is fundamentally a very different skill, I would say, to these other F abilities. Now, they all spend life force except F1, which is placing shades down. Uh, but the F5 is really different, okay? Now, top level, what you guys have been seeing so far is is a necromancer that doesn't have a shroud, right? It spends life force on these sand shades, and it spends life force on making the sand shades do things, like give barrier and fear, but it doesn't have a shroud, does it? Well, actually, it does. That's what the F5 is. This is your shroud. And it's not a shroud that flips your abilities like the old shrouds were, but it is a shroud nonetheless. It's a shroud that will synergize with all of your other sh shroud speaking traits from before. And even it's a shroud that gives you a bit of defense. Remember how on regular Necromancer, you drop into shroud and you get all this extra health? And on Reaper, you drop into shroud and you get all of this extra health? Well, that's still kind of true on the Scourge as well. You drop into shroud and gain extra health because the F5 gives you barrier, which basically is a similar version. So we do get perks from going into it. It's not just barrier, it's also extra stuff. Not only do we go into the shroud ourselves, but our sand shades also shroud. And by doing this, they start pulsing damage out. And in fact, they put seven pulses of damage out while they're in shroud, and so do you. Each of those pulses can. So here, I'm going to summon three shades, and when I press my Q to go into Desert Shroud, all these guys will go into Desert Shrouds as well. Ready? Swiftly. Boom. And you can see the little effect appears on them. This is the effect that appears on me. Again, I wish it looked a bit better. Come on. We've seen this effect too much. But so what does Desert Shroud do? Tons of barrier for us, and it also pulses damage out around us and torment out around us. But you might be thinking, okay, well, WP, hold on. I still haven't really seen much damage here. It's actually incredible. And I'll explain where the damage comes from now to you guys. And for this, we have to actually look at the uh, F1, the actual summoning of the shades themselves, because it's really kind of fit the way that this works, uh, and hopefully I can explain this quite well to you all. So when you drop a shade, um, what will happen is around that sand shade, as you place it, it will attack around it. It will pulse around it once, only once, and then after that it will just be passive forevermore. So when you drop a shade, it pulses around it, and you can see by default on the F1 there, it puts a little bit of Condi out around it, just the once as it attacks there. Then, anytime you use a different F ability, it will pulse again. So if we, not only do we cleanse some conditions around us, but it also causes that shade that was on the ground to pulse again and put the torment out around it again. And then if we use the F3 to give ourselves some barrier, it will pulse again. And then if we use the F4 to fear, it will pulse again. And by that point, the F2 is probably up again, so we can do that and it will pulse again. And even when we place another shade down, the original one will pulse again. Does that make sense? So you place a shade, it pulses. You place a second shade, and the original one, one will pulse, and the new one will pulse. And then you place a third shade, and the original one will pulse, the second one will pulse, and the third one will pulse all together. And so you can see how you can start covering a lot of territory. Now, if you trait for Soul Reaping and, say, Doomfire, which is that your F1 deals burns on the other uh, Necro specializations, instead what will happen now is that pulse that was originally just doing Torment now pulses both Torment 
and burning. As you can see, this now suddenly becomes quite a lot of condi damage. The best thing then is to go back to our desert shroud. Remember what I said about desert shroud. When we're in the desert shroud, we do seven ticks of damage around us, and there's seven ticks of damage around all of our shades. Yes, what that translates into is one torment from the baseline, pulse from the uh, sand shades. Then we get extra torment on pulse because of the desert shroud, which then combos the original one, so it's double torment that pulses seven times. So the F5 is actually insanely strong. If you drop some shades in an area while you're in the Desert Shroud, and they all are as well, it completely goes bonkers the amount of conditions that you can start thrusting out specifically because of the way this is tradable. And it's tradable in a lot of cool ways. So that's how it works. Hopefully that makes sense to you guys. I think the best demonstration now for all these interesting synergies is to look at the traits themselves. Because of course, not only do we have core stuff, we've got the uh, Scourge's stuff himself. So what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to put on, um, I don't know, we'll put on a Viper Amulet, right, just so that this looks at least vaguely impressive. An Ice Rune, that's kind of weird. Let's put on, uh, Tormenting Runes as well, shall we? Okay, so we've got lots of Condi damage here, and I'll show you the, I'll show you how this works offensively, because I know a lot of you guys aren't excited about the Elite Specializations until you see it doing a lot of damage, and I haven't shown that just yet. Uh, and let's have a look at the middle line, which, as far as I remember, is the damage line for the Scourge. So, uh, let's talk about Miners first. Every single one will get this Sand Sage. We get extra concentration. And remember what I said about concentration earlier. That's great for keeping the might on your friends. We gain concentration and expertise. So increased boon duration and increased condition duration for every one of our active shades. So that's plus 75 for each one that we do, which is quite nice. And also we have blood as sand. I love the name of that trait. We reduce the incoming damage that we take for every shade we also have active. So 5, 10, 15% because we can have three up. So we're 15% tankier. I kind of don't like seeing this. I feel like if the Scourge is all, all about no longer having that innate sustain, why are you now forcing us to have innate sustain again in a minor trait? But hey, fine. Um, so let's look at the middle line. This is all about the damage, okay? So first, Fell Beacon. This affects our Torch. The Torch skills get quicker recharges. So we go down to 16 seconds and 20 seconds. And also we get condition duration, expertise, based on condition damage. So that's a fun little conversion. As long as we build as much condition damage as possible, we get higher and higher and higher uh, condition condition durations. So there you can already see I'm on 68% bleeds, 68% burn, and 88% torment, which are pretty nice values actually for the PvP era. Alright, and we're not over capping on any of them. So you get Fell Beacon, I love the name of that trait too. Uh, next we have Sadistic Searing. This affects punishment. So this one affects the new torch. This one affects the new utilities. The new weapon. And this one affects the new utilities. So punishment skills also recharge faster now. And what they do is after you use a punishment, if you're going to summon a shade, you that shade will start burning around it. Uh, so you get this buff, Sadistic Searing. So you can start the fight off by casting this Desiccate, for example, which will give us a ton of might, and then immediately start summoning your Shades, which will now not only put Torment around them, but they'll also put Burning around them. And then lastly, we have the Grandmaster Demonic Law. This is one of the really fun ones. So this, first of all, makes our Torment do increased damage. 33% increased Torment. Now, you guys might have missed it, but regular Guild Wars 2 just had a patch that meant Torment, now baseline, whether they're moving or not, does the same amount of damage as Bleeds. So it already had a baseline massive buff, and now, if you take Demonic Law because you're a Scourge, you get another 33% damage on top of that. But even on top of that, okay, Torment, whenever you apply it, will cause burning. And burning is the hardest hitting condition in the game, like singular condition. So it's on a three second internal cooldown. But what this means is if you take all of this, the second you summon a uh, shade, these shades will do uh, tor torment and burning into more burning and more tor it's, it's just crazy. And you can drop three of them. So I'll show you that now, guys. Now that everything's been explained, we'll go desiccate here. And we will start summoning our shades. And you will just see the obscene damage that is just constantly getting pulsed out by these guys. And now that we've got our three down there, what happens if we go into Desert Shroud, you wonder? Well, they all start pulsing out massive flat damage and massive ticks of uh, Torment further, which is all supercharged and way stronger than it was before because of our Shroud. So this Shroud, even though it doesn't change our health bar, it's still incredibly powerful and something very much to pay attention to. That's before we cast our Elite or before we plague the ground with our Torch. And, well, you, can, you kind of get the gist of... Uh, what this condition damage is really like. Uh, and really, it's all centered on the burning, the torment, and the bleeds there.
Oof, it's a good thing there's a lot of Condi Cleanse around in the game coming too, hey? Okay, so we've got that. Um, that's kind of the offensive style of the uh, Scourge. Let's have a look at some of the other trait lines now. Uh, let's go bottom, okay? So while the middle line is all about damage, the bottom line is all about boon corrupt and uh, what we can do there. So both this Elite Specialization and the Spellbreaker from Generation 2 have a lot of boon corrupt. And this is what we're dealing with. So first of all, we've got Nourishing Rot, which means that every time we remove a boon or corrupt one, we get life force. Okay, you can think of this very similar as, you know how Reaper was centered around Chill, and it was getting life force on Chill? Well, you can kind of see that as uh, the, the equivalent for here. Then we have Unending Corruption, where we, whenever we manifest a shade, it will corrupt boons on foes nearby. Um, so it's kind of the equivalent, remember this one was uh, burning when you summon, this one is removing boons. Um, and it's not just removing boons, but it's corrupting them. So if someone has stability, you've now just feared them. And you've maybe started doing damage on that fear because of your other lines and so forth, right? Uh, then also, lastly, and this one's totally crazy, we have Feed from Corruption. Oh boy. So if you're playing this in World vs. World or any place where there are tons of boons, this is a bit obscene. There is no internal cooldown on this. There's none. Now, I can't demonstrate it to you too easily here in the Heart of the Mists, but... If you ever remove it or corrupt a boon in any way, if you get rid of a boon on an enemy, you gain it. So it's like any form of boon rip in Guild Wars 2, whether that be through rune stage or whatever, right? In fact, I don't think it exists on runes, but still, through any method, or any core necromancer method, like spinal shivers, if you do any of that, you will gain those boons. It all becomes boon stealing, essentially. Um, and it's quite strong too. You can, you'll notice there that it says you get three might. So if I rip one might off of a target, I actually gained three from the trait, so I gained more than they had. Uh, the downside is if I rip 25 might from them, I only gain three. But still, you can get a lot. And if I rip one stab from someone, I gain two stab. And every other boon in the game. It means that if you really do pile out stuff like this elite here, where we're converting boons on enemies in a massive AoE, where we're summoning tons of these guys, when we're using a lot of the other core necro stuff to rip boons, you are becoming a god of boons yourself. And you're suddenly doing even more damage, you've got quickness to help you cover it, and you're taking warriors' resistances for yourself. Uh, it's uh, it's beautiful. Uh, really, really strong. I'm expecting an internal cooldown on that of some kind eventually. Uh, but we'll see. Maybe, maybe the kind of game that we're moving into, this won't be uh, such a big deal. So there you go. Uh, I can't really demo that one, but that's a lot of that stuff that's going on. I really hope there's a lot of boons in PvE so that this stuff can start shining. And then uh, finally we have the top line. The top line is more of the support oriented stuff. The top line, we're looking at might generation. So whenever we give someone a barrier, then we remove con conditions from them and we give them might. So that's really a huge amount of your might generation. We've seen some of it already, but playing into the might that you get here is really uh, the, the big one, I would say, uh, because there's lots of little ways to give people barrier. I'll point out that Sand Cascade here, this big barrier applying one, this only has a six second cooldown and we, we've got it on our hill, we've got it in plenty of places, right? So we get a lot of supplementary might there. Moving on, we have Desert Empowerments, and this means whenever we summon a Shade just in the first place, we gain Barrier. And you'll see how this rung is now, right? It's, do you want Burning when you summon Shades? Do you want to rip Boons when, oh, sorry, convert Boons when you summon Shades? Or do you want to give Barrier when you summon Shades? You know, there's a really nice match going on there. And so, and lastly, we have Grand Savant, the Grandmaster. Now, this is the big one that's a lot like what we saw with the Hollow Smith, in that it changes your mechanic quite a lot, all right? So listen to this. You can only summon one Shade at a time now. This greater shade has a reduced recharge, and you can affect more targets with it, and influence a larger area with shade skills. If you look at the user interface now, I only have one diamond there, right? I'll toggle the tray off, you got three diamond, we toggle it on, we got one. So that, if you're the, if you're the kind of person that likes making that nest and just having that one area, they've built a Grandmaster and a playstyle specifically for you. You now get the one super charged one, and the super interesting one. And that is correct, it increases the target cap on a ton of your stuff by five. So you've doubled the target cap, a lot of your stuff is now ten targets. Which is obscene, okay? And it becomes a lot bigger. So here's what the new Greater Sandshade looks like if you choose to go for him. He's got a much bigger area than the old little ones. And if we mouse over our skills now, you'll notice they're all different. First of all, by the way, that we actually get reduced recharge on summoning the shades. So our skill one, you'll see the count recharge has gone down just to 10 seconds instead of 15. So we can move him every 10 seconds, basically, instead of uh, the way it worked before where we had lots of three little ones to manipulate. But if we look at our skill two now, you'll see that we can convert condies from allies into boons 10 targets at once. 
because the greater shade can hit 10 targets at once, okay? The skill three, we can put barrier on 10 targets at once. Now, unfortunately, maybe they've got it in there and they just haven't updated the tooltips because a lot of the tooltips seem quite scattershot. Unfortunately, Garish Pillar and the, and the, the five don't go up to 10 targets. Uh, maybe we can see though, all right? So we got a greater shade in there who's doing a bit of damage. Uh, let's pop a fear. Mm, that looked like it was only five people who got feared there. Uh, so yeah, you can only uh, unfortunately fear five people. I don't. I, I wonder why they decided not to put that up to ten targets. And then of course we've got the uh, shroud, which hasn't been changed too much, except for the fact that it can cover a larger area, right? So the smaller shades, the shroud wouldn't have such a big AOE. But now we've got a much bigger AOE for the shroud when we actually pump it on there. And you can see, no, that to that's hitting ten targets. That's, Sand Shroud is totally hitting 10 targets there. That was 10 targets. The tooltip doesn't say it, but this is definitely 10 targets when it's traded. Uh, so there you go. That's the three lines. Again, just to quickly recap up the top, it's a bit about support. It's about changing your playstyle really a lot on the... Um on the Grandmaster, but it's a bit more about support. Middle lines, a lot more about the damage. Bottom lines, much more about the boon rip and the corrupt, and you can obviously flip between them as you see fit. So uh, that's uh, really a huge chunk of the stuff of how the Scourge works, but I did want to talk a bit more about how other aspects of Necromancer work with this, because if you guys remember, when they added Reaper to the game, they basically said that all Necros would get a Shroud of some kind, all Elite Specializations would, because so many traits affect Shroud, and they kind of had to make that still match, and they kind of had to still make that work. Uh, and so it's really interesting then that with Scourge, they basically did take Shroud away. I mean, we have a Shroud of sorts, but uh, it's interesting to see how a lot of their stuff has changed here. Um, and I wanted to show you that, so let's have a look, first of all, at Soul Reaping. Bluntly put, Soul Reaping is amazing for Scourge. And that's because Soul Reaping is all about life force, right? So you get more life force, so first of all, we've got a lot more sand to play with, basically, uh, because we're running Soul Reaping. But you've also got a lot of other fun little things as well. So for example, Speed of Shadows. Entering Shroud grants swiftness and removes movement impairing conditions. This actually does work. This works on the Q, okay? So if you notice here, I'm getting, it doesn't have the tooltip, but when I press Q here, Swiftly. I get swiftness from pressing Q there. That's from that trait, okay? And uh, so th th this actually does still function, and you really should go back through a lot of the Necro stuff because there's tons of little synergies like that. Here we have Vital Persistence. We gain vitality, and already that's quite nice because we don't have a second health bar to hide under anymore. But look at this, Shroud skills gained reduced recharge. When it says Shroud skills gain reduced recharge, it actually means all of our F abilities here, okay? So if I turn that off, 15 seconds, 8 seconds, 5 seconds, and we turn it on, we're looking at 12 seconds, 6 and a half seconds, 4 seconds, okay? And I think the uh, recharge on this might change as well. So it's actually talking about all of these abilities. You know, this is a trait, this soul reaping trait, is what you'd actually probably expect to be within the elite specialization line itself, isn't it? But because of the way Necro has been done in the game, uh, we actually see it up in soul reaping. So this is huge for scourges, really, really potent trait. Um, and then, uh, of course, we also have uh, the uh, Grand Masters, and all of these are worthwhile. So Foot in the Grave, gain stability and break stuns when we enter Shroud. So here we can enter the Desert Shroud, and I get stability when I go into it, um, as you can see here. And, I, and this became a stun break for me, just because I have this. If we swap down instead to Death Perception, while we're under the influence of the Q, which, by the way, that just bypassed the cooldown. I, I don't know if you guys saw that there, but we can double cast it, basically, because of that uh, little trait swap there. We actually have higher crit chance while we're specifically in that smaller shroud there. Um, and now we can... Can we just keep darting backwards and forwards? They must have a cooldown still. They do. That's funny, though. That is really quite funny. Um, so we get that. And then lastly, you've got Doomfire. Shroud skill one inflicts burning on your target. Well, you're goddamn right it will. So now your sand shades, if you run Doomfire as well, in addition to all of that other absurd stuff you saw before, will also also inflict burning uh, when you summon them around your targets like so. And it just spreads immense... <laughs> look, look at all the packets of damage. Remember, we have three sh shrouds out, sh shades out, and each can only hit five targets at once. So you can actually cover all of these, right? At least 15 of them. That's not counting if we use, say, Desiccate and then I summoned at one. Uh, so yeah. Um, if this is kind of the kind of gameplay you enjoy, then definitely look beyond just what Scourge offers because so much of the rest of this class offers a lot of stuff. When we even look at stuff like Feed from Corruption, right? You might want to run Spite, right? Because Spite has stuff like uh, procking spinal shivers on low target health, which now you'll actually take those boons for yourself. Uh, another interesting one as well, and this was um, one of the ones I was very curious about, is, uh, is actually uh, Blood Magic. Now, Blood Magic doesn't have too much synergy, but it does have Transfusion. 
And transfusion is really weird the way that it works, but it does work. So sh this is that shroud skill four heals now and partially revives nearby allies. Up to five nearby downed allies are teleported to you upon using shroud skill four. So you have to look at the, the wording of this very clearly. What I thought the transfusion would do on a scourge is I thought I'd be able to summon three shades. Okay. And then I thought I'd be able to pop my new skill four, which is uh, garish pillar, which is actually the fear. But I thought when I popped this, each of these little guys would pulse heals out around them and would suck bodies into them. And that would be really cool, wouldn't it? But that's not quite how it works. Because the skill 4 only does one pulse of damage or whatever, instead of multiple ticks, as we saw in Reaper Shroud and Core Shroud, it will only do one tick of healing. Which is really kind of weird and lame, in my opinion, based on, considering the fact that this is supposed to be a more support -y spec. Um, maybe it's so that the devs can make it really pure, rawly about barrier instead of raw health. Um, but I think that's a bit lame. But they don't pull bodies into them. It's you pull bodies to you. So this does work. Basically, the skill for, and the tooltip doesn't show it. It doesn't have anything written in blue. But when I pop this to fear things, I will fear people away from myself and from my shades. And also, I will blink bodies oh, okay. next to myself. And I will give them one tick of healing or, or res power. That's it. Okay? But it does still work. So transfusion does still work. And all those little fun things I think we've now probably talked about. There might be some others. Uh, and so, yeah, there you go, guys, really. That is the way that the Scourge works. I think it's uh, a really, really interesting elite spec. I can't wait to see it in actual real combat and see how it works in PvE and stuff. And, of course, tuning and stuff will be subject to change as time goes forward. Uh, let me know what you guys think. Hopefully some necromancers watching who haven't played the game for a while uh, now know a little bit more about where the class has gone and how the expansion's going. And I will see you guys for the next presentation. Cheers, everybody. See you later.